Hello, good afternoon, hola. How are you? Okay, good for answering. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm so happy to join the 180 Creative Camp and I'm happy to see you. So first of all, let's start from the smallest thing and let's go to the bigger one. The smallest thing is, who am I? My name is Antonia Folguera and I curate content for Sona Plus D and I'm also part of the communication team and you maybe will ask what the hell is Sonar Plus D? Well, it's the Creative Technologies Conference within Sonar Festival. Have you heard about Sonar Festival? Yes, some of you have been there some time. No, that means that you're very young because Sonar Festival, it's a music festival, an electronic music festival that will be 25 years next year. And since 1994, it's been uh, uniting uh, musical communities that are different. Like at Sonar, there are electronic mainstream artists playing, but also there are underground artists, young people that are starting out, but also musicians that do lots of experimental things that are very far out there. Like there can be, you know, Skrillex, playing on one stage, and in another stage there can be La Sinfonieta Cracovia with an electroacoustic performance. So these communities that seem so despair, so different, and so far away one from the other, they have been, uh, let's say, um, living together at Sonar Festival for 25 years. And they don't argue, and everything is okay with them. Sometimes the audience that likes the more experimental things and the more noisy things and electroacoustic things discover that there are artists that do things that are more approachable, more pop or more, more mainstream or whatever you want to call it. They are great and that they have great artistry and uh, great energy to communicate with the audience with what they do and vice versa. Sometimes someone goes to Sonar to see some very well-known artists and ends up seeing something that breaks their mind into a million pieces. So 25 years ago when uh, my bosses, who are, let's say, creative entrepreneurs, started Sonar, they also started like a, a conference, which 25 year, years ago it wasn't that common, that's activities that run parallel to the festival that are lectures, workshops, keynotes, installations, presentations, demos, and all these kinds of things that uh, are the behind the scenes of what you see on stage, but sometimes they are how do the tools work, what are the new things in the creative technologies fields, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This part wasn't called Sonar Plus D. Uh, it had different names. It was called Sonarmatica. There was also a part about uh, music industry called Sonar Pro, and these parts came together five years ago, and they, they got to be what it is today, Sonar Plus D, Sonar Festival's uh, Creative Technologies Conference that unites uh, different communities. So I've explained Sonar Plus D without uh, putting the right slide. This is our image. Uh, this is not our logo. It's trees with ears, and um, that has a meaning, and it means maybe those of you who are Portuguese will understand it much better because in English it doesn't make any sense when you try to translate it. And it means that we are atentos por naturaleza. That means that we are focused, that we are curious, that we are listening to what happens around us by nature. And that's what we do at Sornoplasty. We try to track what's happening in the creative technologies area, in the music industry, and year by year, we try to showcase what's new, what's interesting, what we like, what we think that it has a future, and so on and so forth. And what we do is to unite the same way that Sonar Festival unites different musical communities. We unite three big communities that are creativity, technology, and business, but not as separate communities, but 
the place where these three words or these three concepts uh, converge. Um, these concepts, these communities, and these practices uh, converge or merge or diverge, or sometimes they run in parallel. And I'm going to explain further more about that. Um, when we say creative technologies or digital culture, it's like a very wide concept. And inside, we'll see that there are many, many things. And when it comes to put together content, you choose only some things that make sense. But digital culture or creative technologies, it can be almost anything nowadays in the world. There are so many things that can be called creative technology or so many things that can be called digital culture because that's what we live in, in the digital area, in, in the digital era. And what we do and what we live and what we breathe is digital culture. Um, the first community or the first area uh, that's very important at Sona Plus D is uh, music technology and music industry, but also music philosophies. Uh, we make uh, workshops, lectures, keynotes, presentations, panels about ideas, processes, platforms, music instruments, services, copyrights, copylefts, copy wrongs, digital, physical, tangible, because playing and listening, playing music and listening to music is a very serious business. As I said, we are also uh, an event about business and music, it's a business, and there are many ways to make business with music, and they don't have to be the traditional ones. Um, another community, or communities, because it's very transversal, is maker culture, because it's diverse, and it's, it crosses, uh, it goes across the fields of all creative technologies. A maker can be someone that creates music instruments. A maker can be a designer that makes 3D printed objects or things. A maker can be many, many things. And we try that maker culture is a big part of our event. And then, of course, digital arts. That's the core of Sona Plus D, creative coding. Uh, visualists and visuals of all kinds, live performance, magic, and installations. That's also a big part of our program. And as I said, I started from very, very small, who am I? From bigger, where I work, Sonar Plus D, inside something bigger, that's Sonar, and then something bigger that it's a, pro a collaboration project that is called We Are Europe, um, that unites eight festivals not only from the Europe European Union, but from other places of Europe. And in this framework, these eight festivals, what we do is collaborate. We exchange program, we curate contents together, we travel from one festival to the other in order to learn, uh, get out of our comfort zones, and do different things. And hopefully I can show you a video of the last edition of Sonar, plus the which was just a couple weeks ago. Uh -huh. Uh-oh. It's here, the video, right? Yeah. We are in uh, Sonar. In Barcelona. For We Are Europe. There are a lot of things. It was a really special experience. This year we we have invited CEO Pop and Today's Art from The Hague and Cologne, respectively. I think that we're a good fit and it's good to have them both here. It's an incredible idea. It's like a big family. And we can learn from each other. Inspiring and creative work. It brings people together in a creative way and connects them. It's like a blessing. I think it's fantastic that all these different festivals are coming together and exchanging ideas. I think it helps uh, making this family grow and making this family is more uh, uh, better held together. Growing bigger, good idea. <laughs> Growing better, of course. So this last edition that was a couple of weeks ago, we invited two of the festivals of this network of eight festivals. One was CEO Pop, which is in Cologne, and it's a music festival that has also a conference or a forum that runs beside the festival, and they are very much uh, music industry focused, 
and we have this part that's music industry, so we programmed some activities together, and the other festival that it was invited, it was a festival from The Hague that's called Today's Art, that it's very artistic, their content is very much media arts and digital arts, they make things that are visually breathtaking, and also a part of our festival, it's also like this, so we complement each other and we work with each other, uh, sometimes joining forces and joining the things that, um, that unites us, but also we work with other festivals that complements us and that makes us think out of our box and try things that maybe we wouldn't consider or maybe that aren't stronger in our program and so on and so forth. So, uh, the aim of this collaboration is to uh, make cultural exchanges because we're from different parts of Europe. There is um, one festival in northern Norway, in Tromso, which is a small city. It's a very small festival called Insomnia, and it's really, really good. It's a music festival, and last year they started their forum. And they started their forum along this We Are Europe framework. Then, as I said, one of our guests last summer, which is today's art in The Hague, that has also a forum that's about ideas around digital culture, and it's called Bright Collisions. Then there is CEO Pop in Cologne, that were also invited at Sonoplasty. There is Lenui Sonor in Lyon, Sonor and Sonoplasty in Barcelona, Resonate in Belgrade, um, I don't even remember, Reworks in Thessaloniki in Greece, and I don't know, ah yes, and in Graz, in Austria, there is Elevate Festival. Those festivals are diverse in, um, in approach, they are diverse in size, as they are diverse in cultures, because we are from different European latitudes. And what we have things in common is that our culture is digital, it's contemporary, it's what we are doing, breathing, creating nowadays, it's innovative, or at least we try to. As I said in the beginning, we are atentos por naturaleza. We try to be very, very aware of what is happening right now, not just us in Barcelona, but the other festivals around Europe. And we try to be diverse. We try to celebrate the things that makes us different. Um, and so, yes, that's an international network. And we exchange things not only curation and content, but also there are artists and speakers and people who make workshops that uh, travel from festival to festival. And that, uh, let's say, that, that sparks mobility of artists, of thinkers, of participants, etc., all around the network and also beyond. So these are the festivals I told you a while ago. CO Pop, Insomnia, Resonate, Sona, Elevate, Nui Sonor, Reworks, and Today's Art. I should I tell you a little bit about uh, how is everyone, because they are different, even though uh, all of them uh, are geared towards electronic music and digital culture. For instance, CO Pop, it's electronic music, and their forum is more about uh, music industry and music technology. Insomnia in Tromso, it's a small uh, electronic music festival that has a forum that was about cultural entrepreneurship, but they also run lots of workshops on, for instance, how to build modular synths and about sound design and things like this. Resonate is a really cool festival in Belgrade. It's more about um, media arts, digital arts, but also ideas uh, around digital culture. For instance, they had like a, a track of uh, lectures about the hidden structures of the internet like the physical ones, but also the ones about surveillance, for instance, or how we, we always think about the internet as something that's intangible. We, we open our browser, we get connected, we put www, whatever, and we are connected to the world, but we are not aware that there are physical structures like data farms with lots of computers, that they are cables that run sometimes uh, onto the ground. These are structures of the internet are there even though we are not aware and there was a lecture about that which was really interesting. Sonar and Sonoplasty 
Sonar is a big festival. It has more than 100,000 um, uh, attendees every year, and Sonar Plus D. We have these different areas. It's music technology, music industry, but also digital arts and media arts. Elevating grads, apart from the music festival, they have a forum about political discourse, and they talk a lot about open culture, about the commons, about the creative commons, about copyleft, about about politics, about politics of the open, and thinking about a future where we share things in the open, where things are not so copyrighted and closed. Uh, Nuit Sonore is a, festi a music festival in Lyon that have a forum that's also kind of new, uh, called, I think, European Lab. Reworks in Thessaloniki, they are going to start their forum. They are just by now an electronic music festival. And today's art, as I said before, it's electronic music, and then um, a forum that's about digital arts, media arts, and everything. It's like they are very good at curating. Everything is very refined. And I'll go a bit deeper in some of the projects that we've done together. And so all these eight festivals, what we do is commit and take responsibility for what? For the collaborations that we do, the artists and the participants that can have mobility around Europe, which is really necessary. Uh, it's not easy to work all the time in your country. It's important to move and go to work in different countries, especially in Europe that is not so big. But also because festivals, we are a content. If our content is good and makes sense, everything is good. And in order to ensure that our content is good, sometimes we have to contribute that it's like this. So. That's what we try to do. Innovation, what a word. It's everywhere. Everything has to be innovative these days. And I think sometimes that the best thing is try not to be innovative. But as I said before, what we try is to do things different and see things beyond what we normally do. Uh, we try to communicate and exchange because when, you know, when two people talk, and are from different areas and fields, that's when innovation happens. Innovation rarely happens on your own, uh, in your own inner dialogue with the people who are like, um, who agree with you. Normally innovation happens with someone doesn't agree with you and you have to agree. And in this agreement, things happen. Uh, so we try to innovate in the format, uh, in the format of events, mm -hmm. not only uniting these two parts, one part that it's, uh, pure entertainment, it's a festival, it's music, you're there to listen to music, you're there to dance, you're there to contemplate, you're there to have fun, you're there sometimes to have, to have things moved inside you because sometimes music is not about just having fun but being unsettled or uncomfortable or about feeling things and there is a part that's more for the mind but not only because today what we are doing right now, we are talking, we are showing our slides, and we have our keynote presentations. When we make lectures, we make panels and presentations, that is a contemporary form of entertainment. Sometimes it's very simple, as we do right now. We show some slides, and we talk, and we explain what we do. And sometimes it's more stage. We all seen TED Talks on the internet that normally the speakers have a very uh, prepared discourse and they move around the stage and they have like prepared jokes and whatever to make the audience laugh or react or something. So the lecture or the panel or the keynote format can get very, very, very sophisticated and can merge with forms of entertainment. And that's what I'm going to tell you. Uh, performances. There are music performances where musicians play. In the last maybe 20 years, music performances have been enhanced by visuals, by visuals that are made or that they react in real time with the music or lights or laser beams or objects that move around the space, that, that kind of um, a scenography magic that happens along the music. But what if we merge the lecture keynote format with music performance or visual performance. That can happen and the results are quite interesting. Unfortunately, I don't have any video to show you. I wish I had. 
One of these projects that has been grown inside the We Are Europe frame framework, it's called Entropy, and it's a collaboration process that was first presented last year in 2016 at Resonate in Belgrade as a project, like the group of people who are making possible entropy, they said, we have this idea that it goes like this, like this, and like this, and I'm going to tell you about the idea. Do you know the electronic music group Doppler Effect? Yes. So they had an idea, and it was to tell the story of the formation of the universe uh, through a live show. And so they united with AntiVJ. Do you know AntiVJ? It's a collective of VJs based in France, and they are some of the most stunning visual makers in the world. They have artists that are really good at making that kind of visual imagery that runs parallel with the music in live shows, but also with an international team of um, creative coders, people who write code to make creative things. And it's a team that is led by a guy called Eli Zananiri, but there are other people working with him in order to make data visualizations about the formation of the universe. But things get more complicated than that. There is um, an astronomer and cosmologist who's called Dida Markovic, is the girl that you see on the photo, that she's a scientist, and she tells stories about science because lectures and conferences and keynotes is something that was basically ex exclusive from the academic world, but also about uh, the professional and sectorial world, like for instance, um, conferences of uh, doctors or journalists or whatever. But now it's something that we are also participating in, as I said, the lectures as a form of entertainment that's good for the mind. You learn things while you are having fun. So she tells stories about science, and this format, Entropy, is about exploring scienti scientific storytelling through data visualizations made by creative coders, through breathtaking visuals, but also through electronic music. It's really fantastic. As I said the first time, it was presented like a bit, um, I don't know, with a bit low profile at Resonate. Then they developed it for Today's Art, another of the festivals of the network. And finally, they performed it twice, uh, two weeks ago at Sonar Festival. So that is something that possibly we will see more and more in the future. That kind of format that it's storytelling, either scientific or I don't know, other forms of transmitting knowledge to the audience. Because if this kind of, let's say, performance of this kind of content appeals to the audience, it means that there is a, an audience in the world that's very curious and that wants to be, I don't know, that wants to have his mind tickled somehow. So that's good news that there are millions and millions of people that want to learn new things and want to be exposed to new things, that is good news for everyone. So possibly this format that's between lecture and performance, we will see more and more. This is not the first one, there are more. I've had the opportunity to see certain things. It's really interesting and really cool. And possibly, maybe, I don't know, Luis, maybe next year we should have something like this here. No? We should, he says, <laughs> yes. So innovation in the ideas, here are, there are two images. One it's uh, like a mesh of networks that could perfectly represent the internet, but we, it could also perfectly represent each one of us that we are connected. We are connected to our show, social networks, we are connected to our friends, and we are connected to the outer world. And um, the content that we try to, to propose in our forums, it's about, it's normally open, and it's about that idea of networking, about things that are open source, things that are open hardware, open software, open ideas, but not only. And also in the other image, there is like a person and a city, 
because um, one of the themes that we are working on, it's how will be culture in the city of the future? Uh, and how can we contribute? We see that every day in our cities there are changes like gentrification. I don't know in what cities do you live, but some of our cities, this is like the buzzword for the moment, gentrification, that people get uh, pushed out of their neighborhoods in order to welcome tourism or, um, or shops or businesses or whatever. So if citizens get pushed out of neighborhoods, creators and artists are also pushed out of neighborhoods. In fact, normally artists and creators are the ones that are first pushed out. And sometimes they are like the first agent of gentrification. If in one place there are people creating, normally there is an economy that builds around them, like bars and shops, facilities, things, and then that attracts more people. Or at least that's one of the models of gentrification. And it's not good that artists are expelled outside of the center of the cities, but we try to find out how artists can work with the cities, within the cities, to build a sustainable culture and sustainable art practices for the future. Uh, the themes that we've been working on during these three years that last the project, the first one was cultural entrepreneurship, because us, as festivals, we are cultural entrepreneurs. Our business is to propose cultural content to people, but also some of our audience are cultural entrepreneurs too. Uh, as we are a conference or we have forums, so lots of our um, audience are professionals that want to learn more, that want to connect with each other, that want to get to know each other, that want to know what's going on in their um, professions, environment. This year we are working in this role of the culture in the city of the future, and next year we are uh, starting to work in new activists of the European culture, and we'll see what will come out out of that. I will tell you about what we did in the role of culture in the city of the future last summer, and we worked with CEO Pop Festival, and we made a panel with, uh, do you know Tresor, the club in Berlin? Like, it's a very legendary uh, club. It's a milestone of techno music, and we had uh, his founder, Dimitri Hegerman, who is a cultural activist that basically all his life has revolved around converting uh, abandoned spaces and sometimes, let's say, um, ruins in cities or industrial ruins in cities in places where culture can happen and can thrive. One of these places is the Club Tresor, and now he is working to make the same thing to uh, bring the Berlin experience to Detroit, which is a city with lots of abandoned spaces and with a very solid uh, musical culture. So that is very interesting. And it was like great to have his experience at Sona Festival. And the other participant was Mary, Marie McPartlin. She's the director of um, a space in London that's very new, they started a year ago, which is called Somerset House Studios. Somerset House, I don't know if you've been there, it's a palace in the middle of London, in the center. Um, and now there are ateliers and spaces for artists so they can work in the center of the city, not somewhere in the outskirts where nobody wants to go. And these artists, there are very young people, artists that are also very consolidated. There are musicians, there are media artists, there are people that work with design, with digital arts. They are all very technology oriented, let's say. And if this project has the ability to survive uh, for the future, it possibly will have an impact in the center of London, I'm sure. So it was really good to have those two examples of how through spaces and through cultural practices, things can be changed in cities, and also how artists can build a sustainable practice in the cities. So we'll see what we'll do for 2018. We are starting, we are starting to working on it. Diversity, that's important. It's important in every sense. It's important that in a program there are men and women, 
There are people from different countries. Here we are people from different countries, different cities. Um, in, our, in our festival network, we are diverse because we are different. We are from different places, but we are also similar. We share like a very similar mindset. But as long as we are diverse, we have the ability to get out of our comfort zones and build different things together. And the numbers, eight events, 300,000 festival goers, 90 artists from the European Union, from Europe, from the rest of the world, 75 speakers from 35 different countries. And these numbers, I think that they should be updated because I think that they have like a couple months, but we'll do. So we, we Are Europe is like the motto of We Are Europe, beyond Europe, because there are two festivals who are not European Union, like Resonate in Belgrade and Insomnia in Tromso in Norway, but also there is like the British example nowadays that they are Brexiting, we don't care what happens politically, uh, culturally, in our differences and our diversity, I don't know, we have things in common and we have to work because of that, because to be sustainable, we have to move around because all of our countries are very, very small. Exchanges, when you exchange, you grow, you learn. And by now the experience has been like really rewarding and really good. And I'm going to tell you one up one of these examples. There is this Spanish artist, this girl over here. She's called Alba G. Corral. I don't know if you've seen her work. She's a creative coder. She is a computer programmer that at some point in her life, she decided that she had to do something creative and she started to work uh, with processing, which is um, it, it's a software, it's a framework. Uh, to work with visuals in real time and with data visualization, among other things. And she's been in most of the festivals uh, during this year and a half. She's played with Wookie and Bruna, which are two Spanish artists in Norway. She's played with Sanjin, I think it was, in uh, Austria, and with, with Regan in, in Belgrade. So she is a visual artist. She's had the opportunity to tour around Europe and collaborating with artists of uh, every country. But it, she's not the only example, but she's a really good one. And so we exchange not only with artists, but with everybody. Artists, professionals, creative people, thinkers, journalists, media partners. We have been making radio programs at Resonance FM. If you tune in to Resonance FM, I don't know if you know it, but it's uh, London's uh, musician-run uh, independent radio station, but also with other media, where we can spread our word of what we are doing and how we are having fun making things together in this program that is funded by the European Union and that allows us to collaborate and to build things and to learn and to make amazing, happens, amazing things happen in our work which is pretty amazing if you ask me. And so, yes, we exchange with everybody, with our whole European network, which there are a lot of countries, so there is a lot to explore. So we are normally, there are, for instance, there are countries that have, that their artists are more international. For instance, let's say in the UK, their artists are very used to go outside Europe and around the world touring and they are a value for the country. And for instance, the Spanish artist is not so common that Spanish artists can tour the world, especially electronic artists. And in other countries also, there are many artists that they rarely are known outside their frontiers, even though nowadays things spread around so fast. So building that kind of networks allows for artist mobility so we know about what everybody else is doing around Europe and hopefully one day beyond because, I don't know, the world is big but it's small at the same time and we are all connected. So we'll see what we'll do for the future. And that's it. If you have any questions, you can ask me.
Do you have any questions? Don't be shy. <laughs> no? Please. Check, check. Okay. Uh, I've been hearing about uh, night, a lot of prominent nightclubs in London shutting down. Yep. We're facing that in Toronto as well as property values are going up. A lot of music venues are being closed down. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe you could speak to like the, how you guys are responding to this or, or speak to what, what's happening here. Mm -hmm. That happens, no, maybe the London example because they have such a like so let's say intense nightlife and they they are so well known around the world that we know much better their, their case and because they are also very good at communicating uh, that's what we know but that happens everywhere like maybe the fabric example in london is the most famous one but clubs have been shutting down as you say in toronto but also in barcelona and everywhere basically how do we address it uh, with this activity with Dimitri, because the Tresor Club closed once just because of this, uh, mm, let's say, building speculation, and he reopened it. He found a new space and he reopened it. And we tried to address it very simply through one activity, through a panel that we tried to uh, propose positive ideas instead of saying, everything goes wrong, clubs are closing down, yes, this is happening. But rather than doing this, it's like there is some inspiring example or, or some good example that we can learn from. And that, that uh, specific panel was called Fight for Your Right to Party and Create, because that's pretty much what we have to do. Uh, in order that musicians, and not just musicians, but visualists, the people that makes the visuals that go with the music, that's become a very intrinsic part of uh, electronic music, in order that they have a sustainable practice, they need to play. And in order that we, that we can have them in festivals, it means that they have to play in clubs all year round. And it's our responsibility, I think, to defend those spaces that they exist. But not also the spaces to play music, but also the places where artists can, can do their job and they can create and they can go to the studios and do things. And in cities, there are lots of, uh, let's say, imbalances about that. Like there are cities that have lots of things. For instance, when I went to Tromso at Insomnia Festival, I was surprised it's a tiny city. It's 70,000 inhabitants and they have amazing cultural facilities. And in Barcelona, there are, but there are not many and they are not that open. Like sometimes you have to ask for permission and they tell you no. And there you just pay a small fee and you can use the studio really well equipped, equipped to make music. So I think that we have to learn from other cities, basically. And we have to be responsible and if they close our favorite club, we have to do something. More questions? Yes, no, maybe. If there aren't any, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be here.